Hello there and welcome to another cryptocurrency review. My name is Riley and today we're going to be looking at a cryptocurrency which has been getting quite a lot of sudden attention lately. Which am I talking about? Ryblox. And as with all my other videos, I wanted to, to mention that I'm going to put each of these headings in here for each of the sections of my video and put a, a, a timestamp next to them in the description box below. So you can go and click on that timestamp if you just want to see a specific part of the video. As always, without further ado, before I get into it as well, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but let's get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so to start off nice and simple, what is Ryblox? Well, Ryblox is basically an open source platform with a cryptocurrency known as XRB. And for the cryptocurrency, it has a, a circulating supply of 133 million coins with a total of 133 million coins. It's not exactly 133 million, but it's around there and I thought I'd just save the time. Also, a big thing to mention that for Roblox, transactions have zero fees on them. So straight into the features of Roblox, and you may notice that I did not mention the word blockchain platform when I talked about what it is. I just simply mentioned bla uh, platform. And that is because like IOTA, if you've seen or know of IOTA, Roblox uses a DAG or a directed acyclic graph. Um, in, but instead of a tangle, Roblox uses its own technical uh, technology called a block lattice. And a block lattice is similar to a blockchain, but with a few key differences. To start, each account on Ryblox will have its own blockchain called an account chain. And only an account chain user can modify his or her chain. And this allows each account chain to be updated asynchronously with the rest of the network. So that means it doesn't have to all update at the same time to be able to function, which is a really cool feature. Also, users can send and update their blocks on their account chain without relying on the whole network. So that's basically another thing with the whole asynchronous part. To achieve this, the funds sent on the ride blocks requires two transactions. So instead of one to send transaction, you have two transactions. Then one's a sender, like you normally would, and then another is a receiving transaction for the person who's getting the funds. And to settle the funds, the receiver must sign the block confirming that the funds were received. And when they do sign it, the funds will be, uh, I guess you could say, debited into their account. And we can see here with this diagram how we have few different account chains. We have account chain A, B, and C. And we can see here, like we've got a couple of different scenarios here. We've got A doing a send transaction to C, while C does a receiving transaction. And then at the same time, A, oh, well, not at the same time, for the next blocks, A is doing two received transactions, whereas C is doing another two received transactions and a send transaction. So, if only the sender signs the block, the transaction will be pended as unsettled. So, it's sort of, sort of, it's not, it's not multi-sig, but it's sort of like that in the way, in the nature of how it works, in how two people have to sign up for it to go through. All transactions are sent in UDP packets and all these are, are just streamlined uh, bits of data packets. So they're much more streamlined and less uh, storage cost than usual packets that other blockchains use. And what this does, it keeps costs low and allows senders to transfer funds even if the receiver is offline. Now if XRB were sent, the transaction will be verified uh, by taking the difference from the sender's current balance on their send block and on the preceding block. So it'll do a calculation between the two blocks, just the calculating the difference. The received block would then add the account, add the amount to its account on the chain's preceding block. So it would go from however say zero and then on the next block it had say one it would do the difference and know that it has one in the account. And this results in a new block that records the updated balance of each user. This allows a record of account balances to be stored on the ledger, so the main ledger, not account chains, but not a full history of transactions like traditional distributed ledgers like a blockchain. So it allows it to be much more streamlined and scalable than a blockchain, which is a very big key point for Roblox and the block lattice. 
Okay, now moving on to the next part, and that is Delegated Proof of Stake, or DPoS. And if you've watched my list video, you'll understand what a Delegated Proof of Stake is. And if you haven't, I, I um, advise you to go and look at my list video, as it is another cryptocurrency which I really like and like the technology behind. And for those who don't know, all a Delegated Proof of Stake is, is basically where delegates, aka nodes, are voted in by the t uh, by the network and the network is basically the token holders of the XRB and they're voted in to validate transactions just like miners do on a block like a proof of work blockchain like Bitcoin and if someone tries to reference a block a send block twice aka they try to double spend on the block lattice what happens is the delegates of the network will vote which block is correct by staking their XRB and whichever gets the most votes is the verified block and this means that basically a 51% attack on the network is basically impossible unless the majority of the network is interested in financial suicide. And I don't think they really want to get into that business anytime soon because it doesn't really work out too well. Um, the next bit, why is it useful? And first of all, it's spam and civil resistant. And first of all, spam resistant. So what is spam? Spam is basically when you send a huge volume of transactions onto a network in an effort to bottleneck it and clog it up. And what you do to counteract this, like in IOTA, uh, Ryblox uses a small amount of proof of work in their algorithm. This is just a very tiny bit, nothing much. It's only a little bit, and but even though it's a little bit, if you were to try and spam the network, the cumulative total um, of the resources that it would take in order to spam the network just becomes crazy. Like it becomes way too economically unviable and that what stops it from being spammed. Also for Sybil resistant, basically Sybil behavior is when you have a node and a node identifies as more than one node and try to, in an effort to try and gain more power in the network. And the way delegated proof of stake prevents this is that with delegated proof of stake, no matter how many nodes you have, even if you had a million nodes, it would not matter because your network power depends on your stake. So even if you had, like I said, a million nodes, but you only had a hundred or a thousand XRB, you still got that hundred XRB. You don't have a million times that. So you don't have any more power in the network than you previously did which is a really good thing, a simple yet effective way of keeping it uh, simply secure. Also, the DPoS allows it for it to be decentralized, far more decentralized than proof of work, as the delegates are being voted in, and it is also much more energy efficient, which is another big scalability problem which proof of work blockchains like Bitcoin face that not a lot of people tend to really focus on, yet it's such a huge issue. Also, the dual transaction mechanism eliminates the need for miners, like on a Bitcoin network, and they allow for fee-less instant transactions. And this is another gripe which people are having with currencies like Bitcoin at the moment because the fees are so high and the transaction times are so slow. And this is the reason that people are looking into other options like Litecoin and like Ryblox because they have that fast transaction time and those lower fees. And especially with Ryblox, how it has fee-less and instant transactions. Also, with the scalability, it allows for theoretically unlimited scalability. It does depend, it does get to a point where you have to talk about bandwidths and things like that. But it is due to this because um, only the nodes only store the account balances on their um, network, as um, the transaction uh, data is actually stored on your account chain. So they don't need to really carry much with them, and it's not really a big blockchain. Well, it's not a blockchain, it's a block lattice. Uh, but it's not a big platform. And also the transactions being stored in UDP is another thing which really um, streamlines it and allows for a lot more volume to go through the network. So the team in the community behind Roblox. And first I just want to talk about the team just quickly. And the team, while not all of them but all stars, they have quite a solid team. And the one I want to really direct you to is the development lead for the project. And that's Colin here. And I really want to point your attention to Colin's previous experience. And you'll see why I like Colin so much. First of all, he's worked for Qualcomm. Second of all, he's worked for National Instruments. Third of all, he's worked for AMD. And then fourth, he's worked for Dell. So these are four big, big companies that are very well known in the tech industry. And he's worked for these guys for 
um, a cumulative amount of probably, I think it looks like it's about probably seven years all up. And that with that brings a lot of experience to the project. And really, that really stakes him as a name in the industry and really brings high hopes for the, crypt, uh, the Roblox project as a cryptocurrency. So the team gets a really good uh, rap from me. Also, the community behind it, um, this is something which has been growing really, really crazily recently. Uh, like, at the moment, we've got 40, uh, 55 Twitter followers, 55,000 Twitter followers, I'd say, 43,000 Reddit readers, 8,000 Facebook uh, followers, and 9K on the Telegram. And just for an example, on Twitter, I wrote these slides up first, the first draft, a week ago. And the Twitter followers were about 43,000 followers. And that was a week ago. So you can imagine how quick that this community is growing. And I only see the community growth being more exponential. Also, the developers are really active in the community, giving regular updates. So that's a really good thing. So where do you buy and store it? First, will you store it? There's only two options at the moment. Hopefully, they're going to come out with more in the future. But the first two, well, the only two at the moment are the desktop wallet and the web wallet. And they're both XRB official wallets. However, I would advise, although cold storage is the best form of storage, I would advise putting on a desktop wallet as it's better than a web wallet. And in terms of buying, we'll see here. Hold on. Uh, oh, I clicked off it. That's why. We we'll see here on the markets, we haven't got that many big exchanges. We haven't really got any big exchanges at all. The most well-known exchange really, with, which has got the highest volume, um, is KuCoin. And this, although is not a huge exchange, is going to be uh, a quite a big exchange in the future. I think it's quite rapidly growing. It's getting a lot of recent attention, just like Ryblox. But also, look at the price and the, the market cap for this cryptocurrency and think it's getting this just of these small exchanges that not many people are on. And also for um, another reference, they've also been listed, they will be listed on Binance as they just won the community coin for the month thing on Binance that they do over there. So they will be adding a uh, XRB pair um, to Binance and I'm sure we're going to see some interesting things once that goes on there due to the fact that Binance is such a big exchange now and has such uh, large liquidity. Also, that's one probably one of the things that's holding XRB back at the moment is the lack of exchanges when that's in terms of the price, but we should see some more exchanges in the future. And that really leads me on to my next point, which is the roadmap. And for the roadmap, they're really looking just to expand and, uh, I guess, streamline their platform at the moment. They haven't really got that much on the roadmap in it or in terms of the future. But really, all at the moment, they've got adding to more exchanges, which is what I just talked about, so they can get more liquidity, more promotion, and a better price for their coin. Also, they're going to release a light wallet. So this is a streamlined wallet where you don't have to download the whole blockchain and it increases functionality and scalability in terms of that I guess that standpoint also another way to add scalability to this already very scalable blockchain is by adding chain pruning and this is just going to be a good way just to add a little bit more streamlined to it and increase the efficiency of it now my thoughts on Ryblox and in a summary I think it's very innovative and I see a lot of potential in the project and I really do like it I can't stress that enough however they have a lot to prove just like everyone else all right so there's been a lot of people talking um, saying like Roblox is the next thing like it's going to be the thing that's going to come out and then other people are like no it's not it's just a pump and dump and all these sorts of stuff and there's a lot of confusion and I guess fighting in the community over what it really serves as in the um, cryptocurrency space also with how it's got a lot to prove like everyone else I say that because everybody in the market, well a lot of cryptos anyway, are trying to tackle the same problems and that is problems like scalability, like accessibility and like mass adoption. And Roblox currently has a good stance for scalability and I think other cryptos, even though there are I think more ambitious cryptos, I think this is a very very interesting project and I really want to see where it goes and where it leads in the future. Also. 
another thing that a lot of people have been debating about recently, I saw like a video, I think it was Crypto Investor did a, a video on Roblox and why he thinks it's a massive pump and dump. And I think, look, it may be a little inflated, but I don't think it's a pump and dump. I think it's been inflated for a reason. Um, it hasn't really been getting that much media attention. And to be honest, not many retail investors go out and do a lot of research to look at these small coins, which nobody's looking at. It's not often until uh, the YouTubers out there and the most influential people in the space bring light and shine a light on these coins that they get most of their attention. And really, he was arguing that the biggest problem for cryptocurrencies at the moment is not scalability and it's actually mass adoption and accessibility. And to be honest, I don't really agree with this. I think scalability is the really big issue we have at the moment. And I think for the next few years especially, we need to really, in order to, before we can mass adopt crypto and bring in the accessibility, we need to really work on the back end and the technology of cryptocurrency so that it's ready when it can be mass adopted. And then once we uh, have the technology under our belt, that good scalability, those good features under the belt, then we can move more towards accessibility and the front end of blockchains and other cryptocurrencies like Roblox. So, um, for my technical analysis, uh, I don't have, the, it's not on trading view, so I'm going to use this bit screener for a change. And um, just leading on from my last comment, as we can see here, this, this graph anyway goes from early, um, early March this year, and we can see here relative to what we have recently, it's just been flatlining and there's been no attention, yet over the past month we've seen a huge price increase. And I, while I do think it's justified, I do think it's probably a little uh, overvalued. And even though I do say overvalued, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go down. Um, actually, I do think it will go up over the next month. But there will be a point where it does have quite a pullback, I do think. And in terms of recently, if we go into the one month here and we change this around, what we can see is... We can see we've had a nice big run up here from two, about two bucks to just over 35, $37, which is quite a nice increase in a month, especially. And recent, more recently, if I could draw a line, I would, but as you can see here, we've got this nice set of resistance levels around this $24 mark. And this is really forming a textbook descending triangle, which is a very, very bullish sign. And I'll give you some other reasons why I think this is so bullish. First, we've got the triangle, we've got the descending triangle, and we can see here we've been going into quite a nice little accumulation phase over the past sort of week. Also, we can see we've just hit that 100 day moving average and it looks like we're gonna bounce off it. So hopefully if we do, we can head nice on a nice run up to the upside. On the RSI, we can see, I don't know why I've got two there, but we can see on the RSI, that we've cooled down on the RSI and we look, we've got some room to move and I think that we're going to see a nice run up on that as well as the MACD. We see a big pullback with that and now we can see we're getting a nice golden cross ready to shoot back up. Even though they're red and yellow lines, but you know what I mean. So my two cents, I I have bought, I bought some ride blocks about down here when it pulled back from this little one here. And I will be looking to add a little bit of my position, not a heap, as I think it's gone. It's had quite a nice run up, but due to the technical factors that I'm seeing, I think that Roblox is going to have another leg up over the next month or two, and I'm going to look to capitalize on that if it does, because it's looking very bullish. And as I always say, I'm not a financial advisor, um, so I'm not saying go out and buy this coin. All I'm saying is from my technical analysis, this is looking quite good in terms of the chart. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below and comment a new video on what you would like to see me do on another cryptocurrency. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below as I will be bringing out future videos on other cryptocurrencies just like this in the very near future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.